Hey, Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Man. Let's have a raw and uncut conversation. People always thought I was weird. And that comes from the way that I think, the way that I eat, the way that I would express myself, the different conversations that I would have, and my level of creativity. But people think it strange. Come on, Jesus. The Lord said, think it not strange that you have a level of understanding. And all of our getting, we judge people, we curse people, we talk about people that appear to be sick, that appear to be ignorant, that appear to be something is wrong with them. Instead of us asking for an understanding, and that's where we have the problem at. I've never been weird. I have a unique gift of understanding. And I just wanted to talk about something that I was just sitting here thinking about that was bring me to this topic. You know, sometimes people be like, oh, my God, that's weird. But we're going to come back when we get this structure. And I want to talk about it in general. I'm super excited that we have platforms that we could just talk about things in our thoughts. But over here, we handle business. And then sometimes we have a little free time where we have raw and uncut conversations, which mean I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it like it is because that's just the person I am. And I've never sugarcoated anything. So why would I get on the Internet and sugarcoat? You know how like we talk about aliens and we talk about other forms of life. I believe those aliens are other forms of life and they're cursed. And an alien is a foreigner. They ask us on our application. Come on, Jesus. See, in the spirit, we have to flip things when it comes physical because we don't understand it. When we say alien on our application, are you black, white, African-American, Asian um, or alien? We mean, are you a foreigner? Come on, Jesus. Are you someone that's not from this land applying for this job in our area? Do you have your credentials? Do you have your passport? Do you have your green card? Do you have proof of information that you can work here at this job if you check yes that you're an alien? An alien is a foreigner. They don't belong in this land or not that they don't belong in this land. It's just unfamiliar to them. Come on, Jesus. We just don't understand them and where they come from. So we need proof that they belong here in this region. When I read my Bible, the first place I seen an alien was in Genesis. And then I just see it just throughout the word of God in general. When he talks about creating everything he talks about how man deceived him and he speaks about aliens and beasts and men of mighty war and strength and power. And that these sons of God in Genesis chapter six slept with the daughters of men and defiled the land. We talk about Bigfoot and we talk about all of these other things that we think are mystical creatures. Like I said, we're going to come back with proof. I just wanted to talk about it today, but we talk about things that's mystical into us because we don't understand it because we've never read this with our own two eyes. They didn't teach us this in school. I always bring up taking the Bible out of school because if it was not so important and if it was another level that we needed to know, then I'm just like, why would you remove the most powerful book out of the school? You could teach history, English, math, science, social study, gym. The Lord literally talks about everything in the word of God, how to eat healthy, how to use numbers, how to, you know, do everything that we need to do in this world. So I believe the aliens are some of those fallen angels, some of those sons of God, some of those hybrid humans that the Lord talks about. A hybrid is a mix of a angel and a physical being. A hybrid also could be a mix of a beast and an angel. There is hybrids that the Lord talks about in Genesis chapter six. And scientists have been trying to for decades figure out where the city of Solomon Gomorrah is. I think it's a canon. They have been trying to figure out where. And like I said, these are things we want to come back and talk about, even if it's later on in our relationship, because I've been digging and I've been seeking yay first because I want to know some things There's just some things that we want to know. Um, 
I believe that the city of Solomon Gomorrah is can is in canon just because that is where the Lord had um, some of the children of Abraham and some of those seeds were traveling to Canaan and, you know, Lot went over to Canaan. Come on, Jesus. Glory be to God. Lot went to Canaan and that's where he lived in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, you know, I, I watched a documentary and it was a rabbit hole, but the more and more they begin to talk about it, I'm thinking like, it sounds like Canaan, the Canaanites. That's another story for another day. But it's just like, I don't know, y'all. It's just wild. It's just wild. Like I said, this is a raw and uncut conversation. So we just all over the place. It ain't structured, but I just want to talk about this. So, you know, those aliens, those hybrids, I believe that they're here. They're amongst us. And, you know, they're not seen. They're unseen. This is what we call the spirit realm, the unseen. We can see. But, you know, the unseen, they can see us, but we can't see them. And so when we begin to talk about blessings and when we talk about aliens and other forms of life, I believe this is where humans kind of do too much. I know I'd be doing too much because I think far and, you know, I ask the Lord for forgiveness because I question so many things that it's going to be in private. But I always say ask a question because it's never a dumb question. And if the Lord feels like you have the capacity to receive the answer, he's going to give it to you. Sometimes it takes years. And when we talk about blessings and we talk about. Y'all know how we'd be like the Lord is going to bless you with more room than you can receive. These are not things that we're making up. That blessing comes from Abraham. So I believe we are a lineage of Abraham. Like we are the children of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is our savior. We worship him. We praise him. But we are the seed of Abraham. And you know how Jesus was the seed of David. And like I said, I know we're going to come. We're going to break it down. I'm asking the Lord to give me information on how I can, you know, explain to people more on why I believe, you know, Jesus is God. The correlation between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm asking God for an understanding on, you know, why people were saying that Jesus was just a prophet. And they were calling David his father. Like, i really been getting behind the scenes trying to get this information. So it'll come about, but I just want to have a Rana cut conversation just in general. And so when we talk about those blessings that came from Abraham, when the Lord said he would bless Abraham with enough room, with enough more, with enough than he can receive, excuse me, that came from Abraham. So we're expecting the blessings of Abraham. When we talk about our family and our ancestors, our ancestors, my ancestors, are those that did the will of my father. I claim my ancestors to be people I know, not spirits that I'm summoning, not a whole bunch of different gods and goddesses that I'm looking up on Google. The people that I read and know about, I say my ancestors is Abraham thinking not weird when I say that when we be in these videos and I'll be like, you know, when I bring up an example and you see how comfortable I am, because that's how comfortable I've been for almost 30 something years. The Lord going to have to correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm not waiting until that time. And I ask the Lord now to correct me when I'm wrong because I don't want to give the wrong information to anyone. But this is why some of these things I just hold back on because it's it's kind of heavy. And I don't want to confuse nobody, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes I just like to talk. And I know some people might understand it, you know, do your extended research. But Abraham, when he was obedient, him and Lot got to a place where they didn't have enough land. It wasn't enough land because the Lord kept blessing them. They had thousands of men, thousands of cattle. Their family began to be fruitful and multiply. They didn't have enough room to receive what the Lord had. Due to obedience, the Lord just kept blessing them, kept blessing them, kept blessing them. Due to Abraham's obedience, the Lord just kept blessing him, kept blessing him, kept blessing him. He said, with all of the blessings that you have that I keep giving you, what else do you need? And Abraham said, I need a son. I need to be able to fruitful and multiply. And the Lord said, well, if you can, you know, hold your peace and continue to be faithful, he will, I will bless you with, he said, I will bless you with all of the stars if you can number the stars, then those will be your nations of children. Lord, forgive me because I know I probably said that backwards. So when we talk about the blessings of Abraham, you know, 
you can't number the stars. When I when I think about blessings, I think far just from that one example. And then David, there was a time where David, there was a city of David that all of the kings wanted to be buried in when they gave up the ghost. And only the royal and the most, you know, the most profound men wanted to be buried in the city of David. And people left in their will and said, hey, you know, when I give up the ghost, bury me in the city of David. And then there was something about a well of David. And then there's something about a star of David. So when we talk about aliens and we talking about trying to go to space and figure out, I believe this is where the Lord confused the language in the beginning because we were trying to do too much, like trying to find God. Scientists be trying to find God. They're not trying to go up and trying to figure out if we got other planets. We're aware of that. They're trying to find God. The proof is trying to find something that is responsible come on jesus for everything that moves around because they know man is not doing it i just got that revelation right here and i'm gonna sit on this for the rest of my days scientists scientists are trying to find god anytime you look up something about scientists they're trying to prove that aliens are real but why are they looking for these things if they don't know about it why why are we trying why are we spending trillions of tax paying dollars y'all this money be coming from us when we talk about tax paying dollars you can think that six cent on a dollar ain't nothing six cent on a dollar with nine plus billion people in the world they're using our tax paying dollars and we barely begin taxes back we barely can get food stamps. They're using our taxpaying dollars to go see if they can find God because they know that they're not creating these things. It's impossible. That's what scientists is doing. They're not going to go give us no research. They're trying to put two and two together. This is why they're trying to create hybrids. This is why they're trying to create clones. Men think they are smarter than God. That's the purpose of this. Men are not humble. So again, you can ask some questions. I know it's some stuff I asked that God ain't going to answer because I wouldn't even, it's just, you know, you never know. He might tell me though, but you know, we're going to leave that where it's at. So when we go to space and we're looking for aliens, say you'll find something then. Because it come to find out that all they little studies they've been doing, a lot of it been fake, it's been staged. Yeah, because you're not going to find God like that. So... Say they do go to space and somebody do find it like literally this ain't stage. This ain't no witchcraft. This ain't nothing set up. Say they literally go and find somebody and they can literally breathe up there. Then what? You've invaded on somebody else's territory. That's our problem. We are trying to go somewhere. And we ain't get an invitation. And. We don't know. See, when we talk about the kingdom of darkness, there is parts in the world that we should not go to. There is parts in the world that we shouldn't be, you know, involved in because of other species of life and disease and animals and famines that we don't have information on. So going to space is intruding on someone else's home. I believe it is someone else's home. I believe it is life. And I think if somebody start messing with us or some start messing with us, it's because we're messing with them. And when we read, we do see that at the point of time, the Lord will be releasing certain beasts from the waters and different things like that. So we're going to see things. We are. The blessings is not just we're not building up. Come on, Jesus. We're not building up treasure here on earth. Of course, we want a house built from the ground up. We want to be financially stable and wealthy. We're going to get those things because the Lord is going to make sure he take care of his people. We're more focused on building up the wealth in heaven. We're more, fo more focused on building up our spiritual wealth. We want spiritual wealth. Abraham, come on, Jesus. He had glory be to God. We want spiritual and physical wealth. We get the spiritual wealth by being obedient. Our uncle Abraham got the spiritual wealth by being obedient. So now, even though Abraham physically is not here, these are still the seeds of Abraham. And like I said, we're going to get into this. We're going to break it down because you'll be like, well, if I'm a seed of Abraham, then I'm still the child of God. There's different, there's different levels 
in the kingdom of God. And the Lord, this is what this is what the Lord means when he says that he's a cheerful giver. So, you know, there's certain places and things and, you know, north, south, east, west and gates in heaven that the Lord shares with us. He shares secrets with us. He shares things with us. He allowed John to go up into the physical heaven and see everything. He said, my father mentioned, this is what Jesus said. His father's mansion has many rooms. If he didn't, come on, Jesus. He wouldn't have told us that. So the Lord literally has enough to share. This is where we get that word abundance from. Like, oh, there's an abundance of what love and wealth and money and but we don't be seeing that because we be so stuck around the environment, the people we around, you know, we so, you know, in struggle and poverty. But there the Lord has enough to share. So I believe the city in David is an actual city in heaven. I believe that, you know, the little stars that we look up and see. Is Abraham's spiritual blessing due to his obedience and trusting God and waiting on that son. Abraham could have been like any other man that we read about and just spreading his seed. But he knew that that would go against God. That's not being a righteous man. That's not a God fearing man. Just laying your seed all around the world. He didn't do that. So the Lord blessed him. He said, if you can number the stars, that'll be your nations. Like the Lord don't give us temporary blessings part time for a few years. You're going to be blessed when we see people part time blessed for a few years and then they fall. Some happened in that relationship to where the enemy got back a hold to them. The Lord blessings are forever. They are eternal. Them stars going to be eternally there forever. And then I heard somebody ask like one day, I ain't even comment, but I, I felt like I wanted to, but I didn't. It just go too far, these conversations. But <laughs> that's why they just be raw and uncut. Uh, somebody was like, I wonder what see what the children of God is from. I believe we're from New Jerusalem. When I read and the Lord talks about how, you know, in Revelation, our Uncle John said the Lord will reverse the curse. So everything that was done in, Re in Genesis will be reversed. And then we will be back with the Lord, how he intended us to be the new world order is a new garden of Eden. The Lord is going to redo that over. And this time is going to be perfect. And we will be in the midst of the Lord. In a garden. And New Jerusalem is going to come down like a bride. I believe that's where we from. So when we talk about our region. And where you living from in your hood. You know. Like I keep saying. It's a topic for another day. I believe we from New Jerusalem though. And. A beautiful thing so like david you know i believe our blessings go far so you know those aliens those other forms of life we shouldn't be going to go mess with them because we don't know and i always use that as an example too like we don't know like what if it is a mars and all of these other things right and what if the lord has set those planets up for a later time for that to be a part of somebody's blessing you know what i'm saying like what if mars like not somebody doing you know spell casting and witchcraft and the time about when they leave here they want to go to mars and different things like that like what because that you know people don't be doing that lusting after the spirit what if the lord does have planets and mars and venus but what if he have that set up for one of his children that's doing his will and he wants that to be <laughs> Their everlasting inheritance. You know what I'm saying? So what human always trying to do the most. So this is why some stuff I don't touch around with. And I always say that for decades. Like, you know what? What if, you know, there is other planets that the Lord is. <laughs> he created them for somebody to have. But and I think this is why men be trying to you figure that out. And they, they already calling these things. They already trying to build on these things. Listen. People ain't as ignorant as you think they are. People are not as weird as you think they are. It's just people have been seeking yea first, whether for good or for bad, whether to worship God and glorify God or whether for their personal gain. Think you're not weird. When you hear something different or you see somebody doing something, just ask for understanding. Ask that person for understanding. Ask the Lord for understanding. But me, I had to fall back with some of the personal conversations that I have because... 
it goes a little far. I, I don't mind talking about certain things, but it's just I'm not about to argue neither. I can sit and believe somebody else. I can sit and listen to somebody else. And not even if I come into agreement with them. It's just I can hear what you're saying. But it's just foolish to argue about what I'm saying and how I feel. And then just one more thing and I'm going to let y'all go. Um, the Mormons, because I read from the Mormon Bible before. The Mormons said that they are ancestors. They said that they are ancient ancestors. And the Mormons said that they believe in Jesus Christ. They believe everything from the Holy Bible. The Mormon says that they are ancient ancestors and they come after revelation. So the Mormons talk more about the spiritual. I read that a few decades ago. Um, I don't know if it's something I should be touching up on this day. Like I read from a few different Bibles, a few different texts, and I was just doing my standard research and it just makes sense to read from one Bible. So it just makes sense for me to just read from the King Virgin Bible and just do it the, the right way and to believe in God because people just be taking stuff and just piecing it up so God is broken up into different religions but you know I don't know if I should go back and touch up on that wisdom in this day but the Mormons said they're the ancient ancestors after revelation and you know when they went through because the, the Mormon Bible that I read they went through and they talked about literally Genesis the revelation it was just it just had a different cover and it just said the Mormon Bible and they talked about after revelation, they talked more about the spiritual side, like they were, you know, have more insight about heaven and different things like that. I'm not finna say they weird. I'm not finna say nobody is weird. I'm just going to ask to do my standard research. And if I can look into it, then I will, because I'd be cautious with that. You don't want nothing jumping off on you neither when you're trying to, you know, research and do different things in different, you know, <laughs> different cultures now. But as always, I encourage you to do your extended research. So this is just a little morning rant. I was just thinking about that. And like I said, when the Lord gives us structure sometime in this relationship, I pray that he comes back and not to pressure anyone just to have us questioning. Questioning keeps our mind going. As keep learning, just keep us healthy. Learning keeps you healthy. It keeps your brain activity going. It creates, you know, neurons and it brings happiness and peace. Learning really does heal the body. Learning is a form of wealth. So, Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Man, I love you. <laughs> God bless you. And have a fantastic day.